bless everybody. Apples! Help an old lady buy an apple! Bless you, mister. A nickel. Thank you, Mr. Rockefeller. You lousy cheapskate. Apples! He's the new fella. Working the subway, huh? He didn't pay you yet, did he? I gave you five bucks last month. Five bucks every month if you work Broadway, Buster. Hey, that's seven, too. That's mine. Yes, yeah, so A nice, long letter. Did it come today? Yeah, I'll pass it around. I'll get going over to the casino for the matinee. You joke? <laughs> Hi, Smiley. Hi, Annie. We're looking for you. Hey, the dude wants to see you. Quick. Yeah, where? Rudy Martin's. Ah, oh, happy day. Oh, Annie. I ain't paid for this, Martin. I'm a little short. Sure you are. Comes Christmas time, what you beg you put in the Santa Claus pots. I know, I'm a sucker. You are. Getting mail. Yeah, over at the casino. Don't forget the dude. Thanks, honey. Ah, oh, shut up. He wants me. Oh, on top of everything else, this one's got to show up. All right, you got uh, 14 fifths of scotch. Just sit it down here, Randy. You got five of the bourbon. You know, Joy Boy, this morning was the first time I ever been to a funeral. You believe there's a life after? You got five of the gin and... Why are you sitting there like a dummy? Why don't you write it down? If I could write, I'd be in the Navy. Where's the dude? What is it with you? You can't wait 12 seconds? You got an appointment at the beauty parlor with that mop? Hey, give me that. I'll write you count. If I could count, I'd be in the army. <laughs> Why don't you laugh? That's funny. If I could laugh, I wouldn't have heartburn. You want to know why Rudy Martin was found on the river? There it is. 50 G's worth of I owe them to the gambling boys. Hello, Annie. There's a note here. It says, thanks for everything. Take care of my baby Queenie. Now, what's baby Queenie? Can you tell me that? Oh, baby, you left your horse. Hey, there's a Queenie running at Hialeah. Hey, that's right. Hey, Powder. Thanks a lot. It's a good job you did in there, friend. For you, dude, any time, boy. Oh, now, come on, Annie. Is that the biggest apple you got? I need a triple shot of luck today. <laughs> this apple will make the birds sing for you again. Man, well, I'll so... tell you, kid, you get another sucker like my boss, you could retire altogether. Oh, I would you know, this could only happen to a smart guy like you. 
Here's a man owns a joint, gets knocked off owing you $20,000, right. and on top of that, right, you'll right. get stuck for the funeral. Yeah, right, Go right. figure that. Fine thing you did giving a poor soul a Christian burial. Here's luck for you. Something good's going to happen to you now. Something real good. Yeah, you could break a leg, for example. You and me, you give up uh, panhandling, I'll give up bootlegging, and you and me, we'll run this speak together. How about that, huh? Could be a gold mine, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding, Annie. Huh? Hey, come on, let's see your gas, huh? Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Whoa! Hey. hey, how about that, huh? <laughs> Hello, suckers. You old chiseling moocher. Here. Uh, Here's a fiver for your apple. God bless you, dude. Annie. Say, Annie, will you tell me why do I always believe that your apples bring me luck, huh? Tell me. Because the little people like you. What little people? Oh, you can't see them. They live in dreams. Oh, the little people like me, huh? Why? Because they like children, beggars, and, and poets. And that makes me a poet? You want to believe in something. Right now, it's my apple. So, the little people jump in and see. That's why this apple will bring you luck. Why, you old Conde, come on. Here's the only thing you believe in. There you go, Annie. God bless you, too. God bless you. And bring your luck straight away. Right. Hey, Annie. Annie! Wait a minute, you stay away from those gin bottles, you hear me? Oh, I never touch it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Are you Mr. Dave the Dude? Uh, I am. Don't get too close, lady. You're gonna drip on my suit. Hey, what is this, Grand Central Junior? Will you close that door? There's liquor in here. What do you want, kid? You, uh, looking for a job in the chorus where the joint's closed, so, uh, just take a walk, try someplace else. And lock it! I read this in a Maryland paper yeah. this morning. Rudy Martin, gangland victim, was buried today. His friend Dave the Dude arranged for his funeral. Maryland, huh? Old Rudy really got around. <laughs> Beg your pardon? Hey, look, kid, if you got any money coming to you, the dude is not picking up the tab for any of Rudy Martin's bills. Now, you be a nice girl, you take a walk. Right, fine. Rudy Martin was my father. You Rudy's kid? You're Queenie? Yeah. Well, that's what Papa called me. Hey! She ain't a horse. Why didn't you show at the funeral? I just read about it. I came as You ain't as... pulling a fast one on me, are you? Mr. Dude, I'm here because of you. Papa came to see me last month, and he was very worried. He said, Queenie, if anything should happen to me, here's the lease to my club. Give it to Dave the Dude. He's a right guy, and I've got to pay him back. So here it is, and it, it's all signed and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very nice, but the joints and hock up to here, and the whole inventory won't pay for the flowers he sent him, so the lease worth about a quarter. Miss Martin, Papa owes me $20,000 and a lot more to some guys who'd, who don't laugh so easy. That much? That much. <laughs> well, well, I've got a few dollars in the bank. What I make at the cafeteria, I could, uh, I could manage five dollars a week. Uh, cafeteria? I'm cashier there. Oh, see. The next one, Howard, uh, Mr. Porter opens, I'm gonna be manager, and then, well, then I could give you a little more. It's five whole dollars. Hey, Joy Boy, looks like the lucky apple is working already. Very big. It's, it's the best I can do. <clears throat> Goodbye, Mr. Dean. Thank you for being Papa's friend. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean... Uh... Well, that's the first broad I ever seen who wanted to do something for you. Hey, you know... Maybe... Miss? Hey, do! Hey, do! No, come here! You know, at uh, five bucks a week, it's gonna take you a couple hundred years to pay off your father's debt. I don't care if it takes a thousand yeah. years. I'm gonna pay okay. off my uh, father's debt. Okay, take it debt. easy, though. I got an idea. For my boss, it was the lucky apple that brought Queenie into his life. Go figure, he's got a thing about Annie's apples. So the dude shoots the bankroll and promotes Queenie into a nightclub star. Much to my surprise, she ain't too bad. 
you know what? The club begins to make money. And Queenie begins to pay off her papa's debts. Go figure that one. By the second year, the club is a sensation. <laughs> We're in the big dog. Want to step back, please? The elevator's coming up. We're getting so big, the opposition begins playing games with us. The dude kisses the old apple, but I know better. I kiss the iron doors. But it was too good to last. Suddenly, the law pulls the rug out from under us bootleggers. Another dollar? Stop squawking. Stop squawking. I only raised you one buck tonight. You can afford it. Liquor's legal. The whole town's on a binge. Baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Baby, baby, baby. I love you. I love you. Hope you love me, too. The big man don't wait easy. He could get very nasty, you know. He could put on them dark cheetahs. Look, I am not leaving here until I get my apple. All right. Okay. I'll go look in a few gutters myself. Herbie. stationary in the house. Ah, God bless you, Herbie. Even the blind man could read that. Hotel Marbury. Give it to me. When are you expecting another letter? The mail boat comes in tomorrow. You know, I could get fired for stealing your letters. Herbie, you mustn't get fired. Please don't get fired. Say, who keeps writing you from Spain anyway? None of your business. <laughs> A heavy lover, eh, hey, Annie? Yeah, King Alfonso. But keep it quiet. The queen gets very jealous. <laughs> well, it's been two years I've been waiting for one like that. The doorknob's killing me. What? Huh? Doorknob, huh? You gorgeous stack of cupcakes, you. Come here. Oh, I do. Ah, come on now, Queenie. Honey. You started this. Honey, I was yeah. just trying to say thank you for oh, everything. Oh, you were, huh? Well, that's the way to kill a man, not thank him. Come here. What's this? What's this, a party? It's the 4th of July. What do you mean, in December? It's Freedom Day for <laughs> both of us. You're through selling liquor? Oh, well, now it's illegal. The funds are all gone out of it. I sold the club today. Oh, you did? Did you bring him? Br bring what? Papa's IOUs. Oh, yeah. I brought him. There you are. The last of Papa's debts. Now, we put them in the Easter fire, and we burn the past. Now, you can make it Christmas, too. Happy New Year. Well, how? 
by saying you really meant it when you asked me to marry you. Oh, honey, I'll marry you. I'll, I'll fight Dempsey. I'll kiss a cop, anything. But let's get started now. Two years is a very long wait. Saturday, darling. Huh? 10 a.m. Saturday morning, we get married. It's all set. Are you kidding? You mean really married? Us? The real us. No more dude, no more queenie. To, to David and Elizabeth. Mr. and Mrs. Conway of Silver Springs, Maryland, and their flock of children. Maryland? Yeah. You know, the house I was born in, I bought it for us a year ago. Hey. Well, you keep a secret real good there, Queenie. I, mean, I want to be married there. Married in Mama's wedding dress by the preacher who married them. Maybe I should go out and get my violin. Honey, Honey let me be sappy. I'm, I'm sick of being Queenie Martin. You know, Reverend Morgan's still down there. He's 81 years old, and he's still conducting Sunday services. Oh, dude, when I located him on the phone, he cried. Can you imagine? And I cried, too. It, it was the wettest long-distance call. It was... You cried? i never seen you cry. Oh, when I'm happy. When I'm really happy, I'm a Niagara. Okay. Okay, Elizabeth. To us. To... The wedding in your mother's wedding dress by the 81-year-old preacher. Oh, do I Watch it. This stuff burns holes there, baby. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, oh Queenie. Hey, dude, Annie's here. Let's go. Annie? Uh, look, I'll be right out. Honey, what do you need an apple for tonight? What more luck do we need? Look, honey, you just gave me a wedding present, right? This little place in Maryland? Well, I'm gonna give you a wedding present, an all-year house on a silver platter, the whole city of New York. I don't want the city of New York. I want a little town in Maryland where I can play the wife and mother bit. You understand, well, it's honey? It's okay for you to shake this. You you didn't want this in the first place. For me, I'm a man. I'm a man who needs a little action, Queenie. Now, let's action? stop this. Yes, the action. Action's over, isn't well, it? Well, I... Hey, dude, the man is waiting. All right, all right. What man? Who are you seeing tonight, dude? I'm making a meet with our future sweetheart, Mr. Big himself. Not Darcy. You're right, Darcy. Oh, dude, no. Why? You're not going to Chicago. No, no. The mountain is coming to the dude. I'm not going to Chicago. Oh, Darcy in New York? Right. The police said they never let him in. The police didn't let him in. I did. Oh, dude, please, not Darcy. He's an animal. He's a murderer. He, he's public enemy number one. It's all headlines, sweetheart. Hey, dude, will you move? Let's go, huh? Look, what? your car's outside. We can be in Maryland by the morning. The preacher can make it legal just like this. Shh, Honey, if you love me, don't depend don't on some witch's oh, apples. We, let's get away. We'll will be you real people. Simmer we can down, go simmer down, sweetheart. Come on now. We go out into the sticks. What am I going to do? Huh? What kind of work? What do Honey, I know? Honey, I can't. You're young. You can make a name. You can make money. What's you can... money? Look, I started at the bottom in this town, and I'm going right up to the top. Yeah, I can outsmart those other monkeys. I've been doing it all my life, haven't I, Queenie? Ever since I went over the wall of that orphanage, newsboy hustler, all the way up, and why? Because I, I'm good, and because I'm lucky. I'm gonna be somebody, Queenie, and you're gonna be somebody with me. And I'm coming. Dude, yeah? if you shack up with Darcy, you can forget the wedding. Isn't she gorgeous? <laughs> Hits. Hey, what's grabbing her? That's nothing serious. She just wants a lot of kids. Kids? Oh, they're me when I get on that kick. <laughs> Annie, where you been? You playing Chase Me Charlie or something? And where were you Saturday? I couldn't beat a race. Yeah. Oh, God bless you, dude. I wasn't feeling so hot Saturday. Did you end up again, huh? No, dude, honest. I'm off the stuff. Well, it's about time. Doc Michelle says your kidneys are all shot. Oh, poo. My kidneys are as good as new better. You think maybe we could postpone this discussion of Annie's kidneys? Lots of luck, dude. <laughs> Save everybody a lot of trouble if you bought the whole basket at once. You know that. Oh, drop the whip, will you, jockey? I gotta buy these apples one at a time just before well, I do. Don't ask me why. We were both bummed until we found that out. All right, let's go. Pick up point uh, the warehouse. God bless Dave, dude. God bless all my friends. That's the boss. Dude's here, Seth. Seth.
He's got his dark cheetahs on, boss. Uh oh. You're late. Late for what? Late for what? For 48 hours, I've been knocking around in this chuckle-luck cage all the way from Chicago. I'm seasick. Jeez, don't any of you guys ever inhale? Like being in solitary, only it moves. Fine thing, some two-bit operator sends for me in his upholstered boxcar, and first thing you know, I'm being hauled all over the country like a side of beef. This your layout? Yeah, I built it. See these walls? Bulletproof. Matter of fact, in town, it's neutral territory, even when there's a war on. I call it Little Switzerland. Yeah, what do the cops call it? They find me in this town, you can stop the presses. There's ten vans just like this one hauling real furniture around. As long as you're here, you're safe. Why don't you get them a new picture? That one's ten years old. Why don't you relax, Darcy, honey? Take it easy. Be my guest. Be your guest. Ever occur to you that I could also be your prisoner? Ever think of that? I give it a quick think. Yeah? Maybe you better give a long think to a guy by the name of Stiff Arm Sam. He once thought he could hold me, too. Stiff Arm? Ain't that the guy that walks around like this? Yeah, it was the uh, blowtorch in the armpits. <laughs> That's right, blowtorch. That's my idea, the blowtorch. You must have hurt. Hey, don't you know it's against the law to carry firearms in New York, Darcy? Isn't that right, Joy Boy? That's right. Here in New York, you gotta have a permit. <laughs> Nothing, boss. Yeah. It's the beginning to figure. They tell me you've been operating ten years in this town without a pinch, right? Yeah. Luck, Mr. Darcy, pure yeah, luck. Luck. I heard about the luck bit, the thing with the lucky apples, yeah? The wise guys figure that's two strikes against you. Oh? Yeah. They say you gotta buy them lucky apples off of some little old lady, right? And if something should happen to the little old lady, then... Could, could be you... like Samson getting his first haircut, yeah. Uh-huh. Look, Darcy, I got news for you. You see these apples? I buy them by the crate at the nearest grocery store. Wise guys want to believe that these apples bring me luck? That's two strikes against them. You know about psychology, huh? Yeah, I know about uh, whatever you call it. I mean, it's like your dark glasses. You put those dark glasses on, Darcy and the boys, they start to sweat from here to Omaha. Me? I use apples. All right, should we quit clowning? <laughs> yeah, I like the way this kid operates, yeah. Smart boy, smart dresser, too. You like hey. that? Oh, yeah. Very That's nice. Rich, yeah. yeah. He likes ah. it. Mind if I try that on? No, why not? Give him a hand, Junior. Hold it, Junior. Yeah, like I say, you're a smart operator. Gotta give you credit. You won the first round. This is round two coming up now, though. Yeah. How's it look? Great hey, class. Nice color, huh? Yeah. yeah. Round two. Now I got maybe eight, ten top candidates for this job. All smart, tough, hard-headed guys. And I can take my pick of any one of them. Now suppose you tell me, in ten words or less, like a telegram, why should Steve Darcy give the New York Territory to Dave the Duke? Go ahead, talk. That's a good question. Right, Joy Boy? Beautiful. Got an answer? No. Got a question? Yeah. Ask it. In ten words. Like a telegram. Why should Dave the Dude give New York territory to Darcy? Hmm. That's eleven, but... Uh... That's all right. <clears throat> you his mouthpiece? Call me his doormat. Why don't you lay down and act like one? Well, what is Darcy, Joy Boy happens to be my friend, and all my friends are nine feet tall, and all my friends make very bad doormats. Ah, you bootleggers, you were nine feet tall. All big fish in a little pond, but all of a sudden, all the little ponds are drying up. That's where the king comes in. For making me a syndicate, a national syndicate, I'm gonna push some of you poor little gasping sharks back in the water, but it's gonna be my water. Cover the whole country. Mm. Deep water. Oh, deep, huh? 
How deep? Dames, dope, that's a little over my head. Ah, come on. It's bushly. We're gonna operate from presidential suites. We're gonna elect judges, We're gonna contribute to charities, finance operas. We're gonna be in the big, profitable business of catering to all human weaknesses. What would be my cut? Your cut? Mm -hmm. New York Territory? Right down the middle. If you're the right guy. He's the only guy. There's one more little detail, though. We are requesting the franchise holders to put up $50,000 in small bills as a token of their good faith. Who's driving? Herman. Herman? Yeah? Take Mr. Darcy anywhere he wants to go while he's in town. He's my guest. And uh, he'll drop me off at the nearest good stop, huh? Okay, boss. Wait a minute. Mm hmm? You're not interested? No, no, not right now. Because you see, this is one fish that isn't jumping into anybody's pond. Unless I'm paid $100,000 in cash as a token of your good faith. You want the syndicate to pay you? I'm the lucky one, remember? All right, boys, let's go. We got some ponds that need water and real bad. Oh, if you get a niche for any of those human weaknesses yourself, just holler. This is my town, Darcy. Wait a minute. Hmm? Like I said, I like your style, but you know the rules as good as I do, kid. The king makes an offer, the king gets turned down, the king loses face. On a king, that coat looks good. Wear it. That guy is gonna play on my side, or he ain't gonna play at all. It was me, I'd warm up the blowtorch. Any mail? Tomorrow. Corpus Domino Nostra Jesu Christi, my name is in the Vita Eterna, Amen. Corpus Domino Nostra Jesu Christi, my name is in the Vita Eterna, Amen. He uses a blowtorch on people. What does he do, weld them? King, he... I don't like that guy. It'd be fun to take him apart, huh, Joy Boy? Oh, yeah, be a load of laughs. All the way up to our funeral. Lying all over my poor baby's picture. As if it were the only place to sleep. Just love and his music. The reception. 
I gave for Lord Ferncliff. You will notice I have increased your allowance this year. It breaks my heart that I have not been able to see you all these years. Dr. Michelle still insists an ocean voyage could be fatal. The old crab. Your stepfather thought he might be able to make the trip this year. You didn't know you had a stepfather. Did you? Neither did I. The young man you wrote about sounds perfectly divine. And I, I hope he loves you as much as you love him. And as much as I love you, my darling. Herbie, the boat's in, did you? Where's your uniform? You chin guzzling witch. It's on account of you I got the sack. Herbie, you can't get fired. Can't he? They caught me putting your lousy letter in my pocket. Ah, oh, to break it. Where is it? What am I going to tell my old lady? Where's my letter? How do I know? They took it away from me. Annie! Annie! You can't go in there! I beg your pardon? Oh, my gracious stars. I have some mail here, a letter from Barcelona, Spain. A letter? It came for me this morning. Are you stopping here, my good woman? <sighs> no, I'm not. No, but but I, I do have a letter here, please. What is your name? Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. Mrs. E. Worthington Manville? Wait here. Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. There's a letter here for me. I'd like to get it. A letter? Addressed to the Hotel Marbury? Yes, I told that fellow all about it. But, uh, are you sure you're not mistaken, my dear lady? No, I'm, I'm not mistaken. I've been getting my letters here for years. Uh, madam, you, uh, uh, you're not a guest of the Marbury, are you? No, of course not. Any, any fool could see that. Shh, please, there's no necessity for shouting. Well, then why don't you give me my... Letter, why do you keep on asking a lot of stupid questions? I'm sorry, madam. I'm compelled to ask you to leave these premises. No. 
Not till I get my letter. Shall I call the police, Mr. Cole? Well, send for the police. I'm no criminal. I haven't done anything. Please, mister. I don't want to make any trouble. I just want my letter, that's all. It's from my daughter. See? It came all the way from Spain. She... She thinks I'm somebody. Please? Lloyd. Yes, Mr. Cole? Uh, Lloyd, do you recall a letter addressed to a Mrs. Manville? Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. E. Worthington? Why, yes, it came this morning. You see, I told you. Let her have it. Oh, God bless you. No, no, no. God bless you. God well, bless what are you, you waiting for? Go and get the letter. Yes, but I sent it back. You sent it back? Yes, I returned it, Mark. Oh, Party no. not known. No, no, no. You, you can't send it back. She'll, she'll find out that I, I don't live here. Don't, Shh. don't you see? Shh, please, please. Has the mail gone out yet? Yes. Just the boys can't. picked it up just a twinkle ago. It's probably... Oh, look, there he is now. Boy! Boy! You! Stop! You can't do that Stop. in here. Stop! Stop her! Don't Stop. put any more letters in that box! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Kill her! Where do you think you are? Oh, there it is. I know it anyway. Oh. Thank you, Don't sir. Leave this hotel at once. Here. Bless you, sir. Grab her hand. Grab her hand. Here we go. Up you go. I'm all right. Let me go. Hey, all right. Come on. Which prohibition we peeled? You see our streets full of nasty old drunks like that. Listen. Bless you, fly away. Are you the smartest agent in town, or uh, you're just a lot of talk? Now, what is it? Your butter I don't need. You want four bodyguards? All right. They get 100 a week, I get 100. With guns? Oh, then I get 200. Well, why you? They got the guns. What's guns? I got the permits. All right, all right. But they got to be from out of town. They got to dress nice, and they only shoot in self-defense. Oh, you want four Tom Mixes. What's the matter? You don't owe me a favor? Do I owe you movie stars? I didn't help you out. You were in deep trouble. I sneak you out of town a little switz. What do you want, my wife? Which one? Who do you want protected? But he can't know nothing about it. The boss. The dude? I wouldn't do that for one million dollars. Hey, what are you talking about? His heart, the dude is hurt. Look, I never was here. Get yourself the Marines. What? Huh? Hey, you creep. Where are you going? Come over here. It was all over town in two minutes. He insulted a king. King? What king? Uh, who remembers faces? I don't remember. Queenie. It's open. Where's the king of New York? Hey, hey, where you been? The dude's been looking for you. He read Winchell. Just returning a few items I won't be needing any longer. Two kings in New York and one needs a bodyguard? He ain't my client. Fly away, stay here. I pass. Stay here. I gotta talk to you. Hey, fly away. There's a 10 G bonus. Hello. Oh, Junior, what do you want? I am here with two representatives of our out-of-town friend, Mr. Bigelow. Bigelow? What Bigelow? 
the Chicago pig alone. He wants to see the boss right away to negotiate deal. Oh, my God, the deal is still on and the dude ain't here. Look, uh, Junior, uh, you gotta stall him. Stall him because I gotta think, I gotta think in my head. Yeah, tell him to hurry up. Mr. B has a touch of mal to marry. Tell the what? Oh, you mean seasickness. Look, you just get the car and come right over. Wait a minute. He's gonna need an apple. Look, uh, stop off a shoe alley, pick up the bag and her apples, and don't stop and play stickball on the way, you hear? There you are. Hey, dude, hey, dude, the man's on the phone. The man wants another negotiate the deal. Oh, is this true what I, is this true what I read in Winchell's? Oh, Tell me, is it? you can read. Why, oh, you, I mean, damn, you leaving me, you rock, you walking out on me for that cafeteria clown? Yeah, the wedding Saturday. You want to come? You two time, damn, you ain't even been one time. I'm going to sleep. You ain't walking out on me, Queenie. You ain't walking out on me after what I did for you. I took you from nothing, and I made you into something, didn't I? And for what? Yeah, for what? So I could become a gangster's flashy molo, not me, mister. You ain't walking out on me. Oh. Did you oh. hear me, Queenie? You ain't walking out on me. I'm not dead to do. I'm not walking. I'm sorry. Oh. You. Now you listen to me, Queenie. Now watch it, Queenie. Watch it. You watch it. You. Watch it, Queenie. What are they doing? Playing house. What, are you still here? The bodyguards, I just thought of what? what bodyguards? Look, you see, I'm a busy man. What's the matter with you? Take a walk, go! Place like the inside of a goat's stomach. Hey, Dave. Dave. Hey, Dave. Uh, Dave, look, I don't want to butt in. Excuse me for interrupting, Dave, but, uh, Dave. Man, you have the worst sense of timing. Yeah, well, I hate to interrupt, but you're going to have to drop everything because I uh, just got a message from Junior. What, from Darcy? Yeah. What do you say? Look, will you get me a pair of pants, will you please? You Maybe. change your own diaper. You I make... said pants me. And well, well, will you please get yourself fixed up? Make yourself decent, will you? What do you say? Oh, in front of her, she's going to marry that J.P. cafeteria. I don't care if she's going to marry J. Edgar Hoover now. Will you tell me? What did he say? Well, Dave, I could hardly believe it myself. But Darcy wants to meet with you again. Yeah. Right away. Run. Oh, boy. <sighs> I tell you, I tell you, you'd come around, didn't yeah, I? Didn't I tell you? Come huh? around yet. Yeah, yeah, come around yet. Now, look, Dave, what? this is worth millions. So let's not blow the whole cake to win a little crumb. Look, will you stop worrying, Joy yeah, Boy? Yeah, but other guys pay him, easy, so why should he easy. pay you? I'll tell you why, because I'm Dave the Dude. That's why I'm not one of the others. Go get Annie. Yeah, yeah. go get Annie. Well, that's all taken care of. That's all taken care of. Junior's bringing her over right now. <laughs> Look, we're on our way. Oh, you see, you're keeping Darcy waiting again. All right, so he's waiting. Let him wait. Yeah, let him wait. The man is king. The king loses face, our heads go on display in the marketplace. Yeah, you've been reading books again. Now, where the hell is Annie? Annie. Annie! Big uh, shots. Big dopes. Your life depends on a beggar's wormy apples and this superstitious heel. Are you still here? Only you're going to wind up in the federal pen or, or swimming with your feet in some men like Papa. <laughs> That's why I'm marrying Howard Porter. Oh, uh, don't keep the groom waiting. Not another minute! You get back in there. Oh, if I could only cry! Queenie! Dudes, dudes, I can't find Apple Annie anywhere. She ain't nowhere, I'm telling you. I hope she croaks. What do you mean you can't find her anywhere, you dummy? All you gotta do is ask any panhandler on Broadway. There ain't no panhandlers on Broadway. Well, what you talking about? There ain't a beggar on the street, I'm telling you. It's scary. It's like Broadway was naked. I'm ashamed to look at it. Hi, Mr. Dude, fellas. Well, the Easter parade's a little early this year. No panhandlers on Broadway, huh? I didn't see him before, boss. I should drop dead. Are you sure? That's only an expression. Any of you crumbs seen Apple Annie? Oh, yeah, I saw her. Uh, right, wait a minute. One at a time, one at a time. You. What about Annie, Mr. Dude? What about Annie? She's in a pickle, you. A pickle, I can believe that. Mary had said he found her wandering around the waterfront, and in the water she was looking. Yeah, she was stumbling along, talking to herself. 
She was sobbing. It's a good thing I run into her. What's the big deal? So she got a package on. It's worse than being swacked. She's been swiping station from the Marbury Hotel. Yeah, for years. And writing letters to her daughter. Daughter? That old bag? She's a woman, ain't she? Now, what's all this about a daughter? And he's got this daughter over in Spain, see? In a convent. She was raised there ever since she was a baby. And now she's coming over for a visit, and she's bringing a count. She's going to marry a count or something. Hey, what is this, a rib? And he's been sending her money every month for years. Yeah, and we've been letting her shake us down, because we knew all about it. We're all our godfathers. We all got a piece of the kid. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dude, we figure you're a godfather, too. You got the biggest piece. Oh, me? Yeah, on account of the yeah. big tip she gave Annie for the apples. Oh, God bless you, sir. That's why her apples were lucky for you. I don't Can't we tune out on this soap opera? We got a business appointment to keep. You keep it. You just stall him. I'll, be, stall I'll be along. How am I going to stall? I'll be along as soon as I get my apple. Now move it. Move it. Move it. Oh, but don't. Uh, move it. God. Where is Annie? At her flop. I'll show you. Come on, Queenie. The old dame may be sick. Well, not me. I got a date with Howard Porter. I'm Never sorry. mind, Howard Porter. I need you. Maybe Annie needs you, too, the way your old lady needed somebody once. Now, now move just it. Move it, I said. No panhandlers on Broadway. Well, you better keep your mind off that dizzy blonde you're running around with. I don't think about her doing a daytime, boss. Well, it isn't my dear friend, the Dave of Dude, and his charming broad. Well, she's just bagged again. And you had me worried. Where's the bottle, Annie? All right. So nice of you to come. The butler will take your thing. Lovely estate you have here, Lady Chatterley. Oh, nothing really. Just something I I keep for the hunting season. Everybody's coming down for the hunting season, don't you know? Oh, the flea hunt, isn't it? Yeah, how about that? Annie, what are you trying to do to yourself? You're trying to knock yourself off or something? You know what Doc Michelle told you about this stuff? This paint will poison you. Dude, look. What? Yeah. The old lady's had her moments. Where? on the image. You really got yourself a kid? Don't sit there, slobber, and answer me. Is this your kid? No. Yeah, those crumbs taking me for a second. Yeah. Oh, my day. All right. All right, Annie, stand oh, up. It's all right. Dude knows all about it. He's a godfather, too. Yeah, I don't want to catch you casing the waterfront again. Do you hear me, Annie? I was born in a place like this, and I don't want to come back to it. That's why I need you. Now, what, what's all this malarkey about a kid? She's coming over with a count. She's going to marry his son. Royalty. They're coming over to meet me. Me. When they get a load of Avalanche, that'll be a, a laugh. Hey, too. Where do they meet her? A crummy old lady. Hey, Queenie. And see this dump. Uh. Andy, you can't do this. Come on now, you old souse. You get up out of there now. Jimmy, Come on now. Easy. What do you mean, easy? She's no souse, maybe, but she's full of dreams. Ah, she's full of gin. Where's the apples? Um, now, where are the apples? Well, somebody tell me, where are the apples? Oh, here, your lousy apples. Getting herself in a jam like this. Oh, come on, let's go. Let's go. Oh, boy, you're acting like Darcy already. You can't leave her here like this. What do you mean I can't leave her? What do you want me to do? Maybe tuck her in bed, sing her a lullaby or something? Now, come on. What about her daughter? What, 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 what daughter? What do you want me to do? What, what do you want me to do? she gets here, she's going to be in a psycho ah, ward. She'll sleep it off. She'll be all right in the morning. I'll send Dr. Michelle down. Now, come on, come on. Uh... What am I going to do, Queenie? What am I going to do? Oh. Poor Cretan. <laughs> Some dude must have gotten in your blood once, too. Come on, Queenie. I'm way past post time. I got troubles, Annie, but boy, you. You need a miracle. What am I going to do? What are you going to do, Mr. Dude? About what? About Miss Annie. What do you Trombinics expect me to do? Come on. We thought you could get her into the Marbury. Apple Annie in the Marbury. And you're crazy. Just Come on, let's for go. a week. Oh, no, in a week. Listen, Mr. Dude. Hmm? We already took up a collection, we right. did. We all chipped in 65 bucks to get her in. 
Oh, you did? Well, 65 bucks is a tip at the Marbury. You're all bad. Hey, what about that playboy friend of yours, uh, whatchamacallit? Rodney Kent. Yeah, he's got a penthouse at the oh, Marbury. you keep out of this. And you too, Junior. Now move it. And the Mar Look, I said move it. His luck is going to turn awful bad. Oh, Apple, be lucky today, huh? All you little people in there, you start working, huh? Working real hard. All right, when you get home, call Doc Michelle, have him come over to see Annie. She'll be all right. She's on a bender, that's all. Hmm? Well, ain't it a fact you've seen her swack before? <laughs> now, what the hell do I care? I got what I want. <laughs> the city of New York, yeah. This great big town and all those heels that push me around, it's all mine now. All mine stretched right out on a silver platter. Because <laughs> Darcy's come around to my way. Now, what do I need that old apple sauce for, anyhow? Hmm. You know, they say luck is uh, superstition. Yeah, that ain't superstition at all. You know what it is, Queen? Luck is an art. An art I got. So I lose the old lady and her apples. So what? Yeah. Lanny at the Marbury Hotel. Well, what do you expect me to do for crying out loud? You... <clears throat> Look, will you say something? Hmm? Look, will you say something? Okay, Mr. Big Shot. Now keep your date with Darcy. Uh, no more gin, huh? Hey, boss, these rich guys use checkers with horses on them. Put that down. Man, I'd have my head shrunk doing a thing like this. You at the Marbury Hotel. Why didn't you swipe some stationery from the White House? You could have said you were Eleanor Roosevelt. Whom did you wish to see, sir? Is this here Rodney Kent's igloo? Oh, this is Mr. Kent's penthouse, yes. Yeah, well, fine. Unfortunately, Mr. Kent is in Havana. Oh, he is, yes. yes. Well, where'd you get the idea that I give a hang where he is? Well, I just assumed that... Come over here. I'm going to tell you something that's going to make you wet all over. Really? I don't care anything about Rodney Kent. I'm looking for Dave the Dude. Who is that? Well, he's here, ain't he? Well, uh, yes. Well, what are you standing there for, growing in the carpet? Take me to him. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Yes. You uh, wait here, will you please? There is no carpet. Sir? Yeah. A gentleman. Rather primitive. Hey, you're trying to make me crazy. I don't know what's Come going in. on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Right, where you been? Hmm? Where have I been? Yeah, where you been? Oh. You know, I, I've had to do everything myself here. I've been through a meat grinder. Look. Look, for 24 hours, I've been locked up in Little Switz listening to that howling seasick gorilla. I'm alibying. I'm alibying like crazy. What do you mean, alibying? What are you alibying for? For you. For not showing up. So I didn't show up. How'd you leave the big man, hmm? At first, I landed in the gutter. Good. Says he <laughs> won't talk to messenger boys. Says he barbecues them. <laughs> Use the uh, blowtorch, eh? Yeah, you laugh. Yeah. The next time, he says, I'm going to be inside the shirt when he Luffin. does. Bluffin', bluffin', joy boy. That's his psychology. Pay no attention hey. to it, hmm? Watch this. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> meet the new uh, queen of society. This is Annie, the Duchess of Apples. Hey, what's your daughter doing in Spain? Hmm? Who's her father? Ah, boss, that ain't a polite question to ask a dame like Annie. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that Rodney can give you his apartment oh. for this owl? <laughs> He's even a bigger sucker than I am. He even threw in the butler. Take a look oh. at that. But not against my will, sir. I love Cinderella stories. Don't you, sir? Hey, go walk, huh? Hey, Junior, what happened to Queenie? I oh, want to no. talk. Where Dave, is she? What? Dave, I got to talk to you. You got to forget all this. You got to meet with Darcy. That's the deal of a lifetime. That's our living. I mean, what is all this? What's all this? I don't know what's all this. And I don't want you to tell me either. 
But what are you? Are you a Boy Scout? I mean, are you a tambourine shaker? Look, Dave, there's a million do-gooders that are standing in line Please. waiting to help the Harley Ables like Apple Manny. Stay in there and pitch, sister. You see, you're Dave the Dude. Now, little boy Blue. What are you talking about, little boy Blue? Come here. Ain't she always been lucky for me, huh, Joy Boy? Ain't she? Yeah, huh? yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. All right, suppose I walk out there and don't help her out of this jam. How long do you think my luck would last? Help her? You want to help her? Right, help her. But you can't palm that crocodile off of society. I mean, she uh, couldn't fool the pedigree cocker spaniel. Well, we'd have to clean her up some. Some? Look at her. A rag picker wouldn't stick his hook into her. Here's my maid, manicurist, hairdresser, chiropodist, masseuse, and the piece de resistance, Pierre of the Saxon Plaza. Pierre the Divide. Take a bow, toots. Mother. All right, gang, here's your challenge. Come on, Annie, stand up and meet your makers. It's OK. Now, this has got to be a complete overhaul, kids, from top to bottom. I'll forget a new set of kidneys. All right, Annie, let's go. Come on, wizards, let's whiz. Yeah, let's go, let's go. My old lady always said you can't make a pig's ear out of an old sow. Monsieur, your old lady was not Pierre. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. He can't go in there. Oh, that's all right. Believe me, fellas, it's all right. You paying for all of this? Fun, eh? <clears throat> well, uh, let's see if we can get it back from the bookies, huh? What's running at Hialeah? Here's the morning line. All right. Here you go. Thanks. Read them up. People. Go figure. Scratch 5, 7, and 12. 5, 7, and 12, Scratch. Right. All right. It's important that these apples are kept here all the time. Yes, sir. And mm. hey, what's your handle? Your, your, your name. What oh, they it's call Hutchins, it? sir. Hutchins with a G. With a G. Yes, okay, sir. Hutch. This ought to take care of the help for a while. You split it up amongst them. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> they know enough to keep their mouth shut. And their ears. Yes, sir. Right. You told them what would happen if they didn't. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Da, 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 don't, don't do that, please. present Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. were turned into a butterfly. Dude, I'll never forget this. Never. God bless you. Well, you, you could have fooled anybody.
You're gonna need a little uh, walking around money, so here you go. I guess everything's all set now, huh? Good luck, Annie. Joy boy, Junior, come on. How do we make contact with Little Swiss? They call your apartment every hour on the hour, or at least they did. We make the next call. Hey, where do you think you're going? Look, I did what you wanted, didn't I? Look, I postponed my wedding a week because you asked me to make a lady out of her. Now, don't think you're going to run off and leave me holding the bag. No offense, Annie. Look, woman, the dude has got to make some bread. Now, come on, can't we get out of here? He my wedding, he can stall his shortcut to Sing Sing. For Pete's sakes, Queenie, what else do you want? I don't want anything. But what about the husband she's supposed to have? Husband? Yeah, that's a man who marries a woman, remember? Whose husband? Annie's! The Honorable E. Worthington Schmerthington. Who's going to dig him up? Dude. Huh? Louise, my daughter does expect a stepfather. Well, go get her one. Can't you do anything yourself? Oh, you're really on the ball. Now, who's she gonna get? Uh, Shimki the blind man or Smiley? Well, you find her one. Oh, you're the one who needs her, Mr. Big, not me. I got cafeterias. I don't need apples. Look, the dude's whole future depends upon this deal. Now, can you get off his back? His whole future depends on Annie, and don't you forget it, frog face. You're a troublemaker. And you're a selfish little stoop. All right, all right, all right. I'll find her. Uh, a uh, husband. Oh, man. man, this is beautiful. All right, Joy Boy, go tell Darcy that uh, the dude ain't available because he's out digging up a husband for some old sauce on account of his nuts about her apples. Where am I going to find a husband? Uh, where am I going to find a husband? Huh? In Macy's basement? They don't sell them there, boss. Uh. Oh. Me? You. Oh, I think he'd be just precious. Oh, that would be a great idea. There's only one problem. I got a wife that's very fussy. She don't like for me to go around marrying people. Now, I know that might sound very selfish to you, but she's very funny that way. I know his wife, boss. He's right. She's a selfish buffalo. Dude. What? I got an idea. What? I know one real gentleman I'm sure we can trust. We? Oh, now we're all partners. Y you know Judge Blake? Judge uh, Henry G. Blake. That's our man. Since when did you ever trust a judge? Now, for a proposition like this, we need a guy with, with class, with uh, dignity, a gentleman of the old school, and a thief. Judge Blake, the guy that told you you could shoot pool was yanking your ankle. Fucker's ready to fight. Now, up in Providence, where I'm out of, an amateur like you would lose his pants. An excellent argument for never visiting Providence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate to do this to you, Judge, but I got a reputation to keep up. And that does it. Astonishing! Willie Hoppy couldn't do better. You pool hall poltroons, once again you have lured me into a game with a master, solely for your own amusement. Oh, come on, Judge. You're just getting warmed up. Another game? I came here to slay a somber afternoon. Not to be made sport of by Pecksniffian oafs. Oh, go on, Judge. It's only a nickel a ball. What do you say we double a bet one time, eh, Judge? Ten cents a ball? Why, that's a veritable fortune. Afraid, huh, Judge? Afraid? I'll make it 50 cents a ball. F well, okay, you got yourself a deal. Attention. Rock him up. <laughs> hey, Judge. <laughs> oh, if you will excuse me, sir, while you break, I'll have a word with an associate justice. Greetings, my intellectual giant. What brings you down to Q and Lilac time? 
Uh, the dude wants to see you. Oh, uh, your master's timing is most regrettable, my dear Junior. I have a plum pigeon in my sights. Huh? Within the hour, Providence is going to provide next month's room rent. Come on, Your Honor. It's your shot. Uh, by your leave, sir, my pigeon is cooing. A uh, little shaky, huh, Judge? My boy, the impatient blade is about to descend on your red hick's neck. Bedroom. Over here, that's the billiard room. Down here's the guest room. Pretty classy layout, huh, Judge? Lovely, lovely. The beauty of the Taj Mahal and the serenity of Melrose Abbey. Sir, if thou wouldst view fair Melrose aright, go visit it by the pale moonlight. For the, the gay beams, beams of lightsome light day gild but, but deflout the, the ruins gray. Oh, my. <laughs> to Scott. <laughs> He'll do. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Judge, uh, you think you could uh, force yourself to shack up here for about a week? Is he for real? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he comes with a coop. Look, if this is a deal, you get yourself a new set of rags and 100 clams. What do you expect from me for all this opulence? Confidentially, I'm a poor hand at violence. Now, you're locked with this gag, Judge. All you got to do is be a husband. A husband? Right. Impossible. I'm thrice a widower now. Thanks to my fleetness of foot and the grace of distance. Yes, yes. No, 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 no. You don't have to marry the dame. All you got to do is be a husband for one week. Queenie. Queenie, come here, man, will you? Judge, you've heard of Queenie Martin, haven't you? My cup runneth over. Queenie, meet the judge. I told you I'd find you a good husband. Hmm? Madam, this is a great honor. A rare experience. And a pulsating pleasure. Oh, Your Honor. Yeah, with a new suit of clothes, he'll just make it fine. Thank you, madam. I'll do my best. But at my age, the libido is most unpredictable. Don't worry about that. What'd you say? Your humble servant, madam. And your eager spouse. <clears throat> oh, well, now, Judge, that's the best offer I've had all day. Uh, no wonder he's drooling. Listen, you frigazid Casanova, not her. You're going to marry Apple Annie. Apple Annie. Apple Annie. Well, even as a jest to you, that's an insult. Junior. Apple Annie. Preposterous. A creature of the pavements, a, 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 a frowsy hag with the breath of a dragon. Sir, despite my larcenous impulses, I am a gentleman. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Annie. Annie? That's Annie. Apple Annie. Annie, the judge here was just saying how pleased he's going to be to be your ever-loving husband. Oh, thank you, judge. I'm deeply grateful. I assure you, dear, kind, and charming lady, is entirely mine. Uh, well, look, okay, you're all set now, honey. You got yourself a husband. Now you'll go to the boat. Yeah, God bless you, dude. God bless you. It's okay. Hi, right, Joy Boy, let's go. You sure you don't want to kill a couple of hours, take some family pictures? Sir? 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 Well, pardon me. I will see that everything is done, sir, notwithstanding my cardiac. What? Oh, you can trust me, sir. I've had commando training, the Boer War, you know. Now, I shall need at least a score of your henchmen, very, very rugged ones, and I shall form a hollow square, and that will hold them. What are you talking about? The ship's reporters, sir. They interview the arriving celebrities, and they will want to know from the Count why he came to America. Holy Toledo, I forgot about the reporters. Why didn't you think of that? Why didn't I think of yeah, that? Yeah, you. Come on, Junior, we got to round up the boys. What time does the ship get in? I hope it sinks. Take a walk. Have you seen the 
kid yet. She's still looking. She's still looking. She Like a doll. I can hardly believe it. In a few minutes, I'll have my baby in my arms. Do you see her yet? No, not yet. Dude, stay close to me. I'm so frightened. Well, at least the boat's on time. What about reporters? Don't worry, I took care of them. The dude has woven a chain of missing links around us. Hey, look, there's Dave the dude. Yeah, with his whole mob. Let's stick around. I've been waiting 10 years to pin something on that dude. Hugging and kissing. Is she happy? <laughs> She's crying. She's crying. Oh, I want you to meet Count Alfonso Romero and his son Carlos Romero. This is my mom. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, darling, this is your stepfather. Judge Manville. Oh, Mother's written me so much about you, but... Oh. oh, I want you to meet Count Romero and his son Carlos. How do you do? Welcome to the United States of America, my dear Count. We've looked forward to your visit with considerable relish. Oh, this is a glorious moment for everyone. Oh, how, how stupid of me. Louise, this is your... Um... Aunt, Aunt Betty. And Benny. And Uncle David. Well, I never knew I had an aunt and uncle. Oh, yes, dear. David is your father's brother. I'm so pleased. Mother never wrote a word about you. Oh, oh well, that's because he's always been the black sheep of the family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, may I present Count Romero and, and Carlos Romero? This is my... My Aunt Betty and my Uncle David. How do you do? Nice to meet you. Would you mind excusing me for a minute, please? See? Uh, excuse me, I'm the ship news report. What are you all looking for somebody, kid? What is it? Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to your Aunt Pilly. Oh, yeah, well, see, they, uh, they just made me the ship news reporter. Oh, yeah, no kid. Uh -huh. And I got to check the passengers. Oh, I'm sorry, buddy. There's no passengers on that boat. What do you call those people? Yeah, oh, those are Spanish sailors, you see. All Spanish sailors, they dress like that. 
Hey, what kind of a gag is this? Well, this is no gag, son. What you gotta do is go to Pier 4. Yeah, didn't you hear? The Jersey Ferry just hit an iceberg. Yeah, then it got shot at by a submarine. Yeah, one of ours. That's right, it was real catastrophe. Terrible. Yeah, that's terrible. terrible thing. Four, Worse than the Lusitania. What are you doing over here? Take this Matt. gentleman to Pier 4 in the Bronx. The Pier 4 rent in the Bronx. It's in the Bronx. It moved. Oh. How many is that? That's five, and we're running out of cars. You will wait here while I get Count Romero. Take a walk. <clears throat> now, I want you to take some very good pictures of the count because he's. Uh, really... Can I help you, mister? I doubt it, sir. I am the Spanish consul. Oh, and I am... you know, I was just looking for you. You were? Yes, immigration. Uh, we're holding the uh, Count Romero on board because of some rare Spanish disease that he has. Rare disease? Yes, I'm afraid but so. But there is no such thing as a Spanish disease. Oh, Lieutenant! Yes, Lieutenant! Yes, Sergeant. It's worse than they expected, sir. They say they're going to have to take the count away in a straitjacket. In a straitjacket? Why, that's ridiculous. But I'm sure the uh, council here can straighten things out. But Why don't you take the council to the count's cabin? Aye, aye, sir. Right. Your Honor, right this way. Sergeant, please. don't get too close to the count. But I'll watch this that. is fantastic. I am going to take this to the Secretary of State himself. I never heard of it. You should, sir. You oh, Looks like the dude's got a new swindle going. Ah, the dude's too smart to pull anything in the open. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute. Let's have a little chat with him anyway. Okay. Gangway. 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 What's the dude, sir? A couple of coppers coming to put the arm on you. Holy cow. <coughs> Junior, start a brand again. Sock the weasel. Sure, but sock the weasel? He's my brother. Don't argue. Sock the weasel. Hey, weasel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How's Ma? Ma's okay. She's all right. Good. Ma told you not to hit me no more. Ooh. Ooh. Fight! Ooh. And a a couple of old bays. No, uh, folks, I think we best be on our way. How's sex with the social mob? It's going so great, I'm scared. First thing, breakfast on gold plates. Then Queenie herds us into the car, and we go sightseeing all over. Did you know New York was an island? What do you want, boss? Got a pastrami in there? Yeah. Ma thought I was nuts. Hey, Joy Boy, we passed by a zoo, and what do you think I saw? A cow! Here's your yogurt. Who do you think is buried in Grant's tomb? Oh, will you leave me alone now with the tomb? Listen, you're sure the Count ain't talked to nobody? Count Romero? Yeah. He don't get a chance to talk to himself. Yeah. When the judge runs out of gas about cowboys and Indians, Queenie starts to sing of the latest song. All right, Junior, enough already. Yeah, please, now. Oh, you ain't heard nothing yet. You should see the way Annie looks at her daughter, like she was a banana split. Hey, boss, those two kids better get married, or else they're going to up and bust. See? I told you guys, helping that old doll, that kind of gets me. Right here. You know what I mean? You know, boss, it gets me too. Only higher. I hate to tell you where it gets me. And I'm going to tell you. You're playing with your dots, and you're kind of happy with the banana, but me, I'm scared. Three days and three nights, we're waiting by the phone. Darcy ain't spent a five-cent nickel for a call. You know what that means? I can feel the bullets. Darcy's got to knock us off now, or we're done. All right. I don't complain. No. You say no bullets. All right. You say no guns. All right. No bodyguards. All right. You say don't lock the doors. All right. Listen, it's crazy, but I've been with you for 10 years. I'm going home for the ride, but not this. I'm not going to sit here, sweat, feel hot lead, and at the same time, listen to that sugar-coated malarkey about the beggar woman and her daughter. That's all. Finished. Done. Goodbye. That's Darcy. You know, I wish I could worry like him, but I don't know how. Talk. 
Ah, for crying out loud. It's Annie's butler, Red. That's the bum from the Boer War. Now, boy. <clears throat> yeah. I'm sorry to trouble you, Mr. Dude, but the Countess just asked me to telephone the Spanish Consul. Spanish Consul? What does he want to talk to him for? I don't know why, but I did hear him say that he was tired of sightseeing and he wanted to meet some people. Hey, Joy Boy, how's your Spanish? As good as my French, and they both stink. Hey, Junior, did you learn anything from Spanish Lena? Spanish Lena was a Hungarian. I don't nobody know nothing. And where's Queenie? All right, put the sucker on, I'll fade him myself. It's open. Hey, hey, you're Darcy's boys. Mr. Darcy don't never send boys. Mr. Darcy wants to see you. Oh, well, we were uh, waiting for his call, you see. Uh, why don't you make yourself at home, huh? And you were worried. Hello? Hello? Soy el conde Romero. Por que no fue yo rete verme? Oh, very sorry. Uh, nobody home. Uh, they all uh, go far away. Yes, they all go uh, 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 California. Oh, yeah, slap up sunshine in California. Yes, no, this uh, Japanese houseboy. Oh, so sorry. Oh, very sorry. No, no, I'm very sorry. They're not home. Nobody home. Oh, very sorry. No, no, I'm very sorry. They're not home. Nobody home. Just me. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. That's very good, Mr. Moto. Now, let's go do some business. All right, I'll be with you in a minute. Well, where is little Switch? We'll take your personal. Yeah, but first, I have a little personal business to attend to. I want to stop off and buy my apple. You ain't stopping nowhere. It's Mr. Darcy is true playing. Up, you fancy pants over there. You, Mr. Apples, over here. Turn around. Turn around. Up, up. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> hey, your hand's bleeding. No! <clears throat> oh! This way, gentlemen. This All way. All right, we'll tie him. We'll lock him up in the bathroom. And when he gets his apple, we'll be back to pick you up. Now Move. get in there. Move. Move. Oh, wait a minute. Lock him in the closet, will you, Joy Boy? They may just wax the bathroom floor. Yes, sir? I am Senor Cortez, the Spanish consul. The Spanish consul? Oh. Yes. Is Count Romero to be found here? Well, I, uh, I don't believe he's in just now, so if you'd care to leave your card... Uh, Senor Cortez? Oh, Senor Conte. <laughs> the uh, Count Romero will receive you. It has been very difficult for me to locate you, Count Romero. This is most confusing, though. I just had your office on the phone, and your Japanese houseboy assured me you were out of town. Japanese? See? Si? My dear Count, what would I be doing with a Japanese houseboy? That is what we were wondering. Very strange. May I? See, see. It is my impression that there's something rather peculiar about this Mrs. Manville. Mrs. Manville? Peculiar? Yes. I have telephoned several society editors, and they know nothing about her. I would be very cautious if I were you. Cautious of what? Father, I resent this shabby insinuation. You did not even come to meet me at the pier. But believe me, I was there. But an official told me that you were having difficulty with, with your shots. My shots? What shots? Yes, a gentleman from the immigration service said that you could not land because you had contracted a, a peculiar disease. And then later, the ship's captain, he told me that you were a guest of this Mrs. Manville. Senor, I had no trouble landing. I am in perfect health. You are a most confused man, Cortez. And when I try to reach you on the phone, I find your confusion has a spread through your staff. Where well, a Japanese listens to a Spanish and answers in a pidgin English. Caramba! Uh, senor, senor, uh, give the gentleman his hat. Very well, Count Romero. But in taking my leave, let me add only this that in questioning a bellboy in this very hotel, he assured me that this penthouse is permanently leased by an American novelist named Rodney Kent. Is this the way our diplomats conduct our affairs? Questioning bellboys in hotels? Good day, sir. This episode will race from my brows in Madrid. Rodney. Rodney. Yeah. It's ridiculous. For years, Louisa has been in correspondence with her mother at this very hotel. If I may, sir. See, si, see, si, passing, Thank you. passing. Rodney Kent does live here. What? In these books, sir. See? Pulitzer Prize winner. The judge, 
Judge Manville writes under that name. Ah, oh, ah! Oh. After the fashion of Mr. Mark Twain. And oh, Henry, Father. Oh, Henry. Oh, oh Henry. Oh, see, si, see, si, Senor. Yes. <laughs> I trust this confidence will be respected. Of course, of course. Oh, thank you. Tea is served, sir, on the terrace. See, si, see. Si. Now, what are we going to do after tea? What, what does Count Romero like to do most of all? Well, he rides a bicycle a great deal. Six-day bicycle races. <gasps> great! I'll call for tickets. Oh, that's... oh, dear Count. Oh, I'm going to have such a surprise for you. We just decided what we're going to do for the rest of the day. So the six-day bicycle races at Madison Square Garden. Darling, we'll not be here Hello for six everybody. more days. Just I drop by and say hello. Hello, Carlos. And uh, buy one of your uh, delicious apples. Oh, here we are. Oh, yes, you see, Count, uh, sort of a family joke. You know how it is. I always feel that these apples uh, bring me luck. That is charming idea. I have same feeling about onions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it, Hutchins? Your Honor. The journalist to see you, sir. The second call. That's who that guy is out there. He's a reporter. Well, what provoked the curiosity in this wretched scribe? He has requested a biography of Mrs. Manville. Absurd. Brother David, yeah. perhaps you can handle this in prison. Oh. Don't worry about a thing, Judge. Everything's taken care of. Well, what's the pitch, Brisbane? From the society desk at the Star, I want to do a feature on Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. I checked the social register. She's not listed. Not in the social register? Or the phone book. Hmm. I even checked the yellow pages. You look under M's. Look, I'm tired. The Spanish consul called my editor and... Say, aren't you Dave the Dude? Dave the... What, what, what is he talking about? Sure, I've seen you around Quinny Martin's club. You know something? You know, buddy, you're wasting your time with society news. You could be a great big reporter, and we could give you a great big story. Oh, yeah, we give you a big story, but uh, we better go someplace where we won't be disturbed. Isn't oh, yeah. that right, Uncle David? That's right. We can't yes. be disturbed. No. Well, you want to step this way? Right please. this way. Right this way. Right this way. No more sightseeing. No more buildings. Mrs. Monville. I have come to know your daughter that well that I love her like father. Thanks. Thank you. And so I wish to announce I will be greatly honored if your daughter will accept the proposal of my son in marriage. Oh. Congratulations, Carlos. Oh, this is a great moment. A historic moment. The union of our two families, the Montagues and the Capulets. My dear Carl, this calls for a real celebration. That is exactly what I was coming to. It will give me the greatest pleasure to announce the engagement officially at the reception for a few of your intimate friends. Reception? With people? See, Father. No, no. Hey, relax and enjoy yourself, newsboy. You're living at the Marbury. Were you? It was nice meeting you. Watch your diction. Watch your diction. Reporters all taken care of, Judge. Oh, Uncle David, congratulate us. Carlos and I are engaged. Well, you're a lucky man, Carlos. Congratulations. <clears throat> Brother David, <clears throat> I mm -hmm. just told the good count we'd make the joyous announcement at the reception. Fine. Well, I'll see you folks around, huh? <laughs> reception? What reception? The count wants to meet some of our friends. A modest affair, nothing elaborate. Just the intimate friends of the parents of the bride. About uh, 100 people, did you say, Judge? 100 friends? You're the only one who can handle it, David. We must tell Aunt Betty at once. Aunt Betty will be the first to know. <clears throat> uh, Brother Henry, would you come along with me? I think we have to make up a list. <clears throat> Mrs. Monbiu. I hope there is enough time for the preparations. Why, you two great pool hustlers, sit down there. Sit down! I thought I told you not to get used to this kind of high Mercy, life. dude, it was a coach oh, I ought to belt him. No, I ought to belt no, him. So, do you, know you... you know what this windbag's got us into? A reception for 100 people. A 
where do you think you're going? Well, I, I'm fleeing from Armageddon, sir. With my cardiac condition, I, I just cannot take unhappy endings. So I'm off to join Mr. Kent in Havana, sir. With two broken legs? My legs, sir. Oh, they're quite... <laughs> oh. Oh. Very cleverly put, sir, yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir, yes. Uh, not at all. I... You! You'll break the poor lady's heart. W will somebody tell me, please, why didn't you stop this before it got started now? Will you tell me? Oh, there you are. So we got to throw a party. What's so difficult about herding up a bunch of freeloaders? Society freeloaders, Queenie. The Count expects 100 of the 400. The only people Annie knows comes from sewers. Which reminds me, you got a couple of sewer rats trussed up in a closet. Only mackerel Darcy's mugs. I forgot all about them. Well, the weasel took over Harry's place, so I'm here. Oh, well, somebody, please, somebody, tell me how I got into this pot. I didn't want to be dealt in in the first place. You, you, Queenie, you were the one who suckered me into this. Yes, you. You know, as long as I was minding my own business and my own racket, everything was fine, boy. I never got in a jam at all. But then I had something I had to start to help somebody. I had to be the big man. I had to start to help. And will you look at me now? Will somebody, will you look at me? Yeah, I got hooked into this old dame's life. I got, a, I got a couple of, of, of hoods, a couple of hatchet men stashed away in that closet in there. I got a reporter all guzzled up in the penthouse. You got three reporters in the penthouse. Three? Well, after you left, two more showed up, so we bagged them. Holy mackerel, that's kidnapping. Do you know what the newspapers will do to us? Does it still kind of get you a little bit right here? Uh, no, well, the butler says there's enough food, so it's okay. Uh, that's it, that's it. I've had it, that's enough. You, Junior, go get those uh, Darcy orangutans and bring them in here to me right now, right now. I like that butler. Calls me, sir, and he bows to me. Makes me feel like a broad. And you, you go take care of those reporters till I get back and square the beef with them. And you, you go tell your friend Annie to take her business right around the corner because I am through, I am finished. Oh, boy, and just when you were starting to act like a human. Queenie, you got 30 seconds, and I'm going to pick you up and throw you out. You know, some people toss charity balls for homeless cats. They even build zoos so wild animals live good. You get arrested if you whip a horse. Ten. Good people help, dude. What if we did? Did we ever uh, build a bridge or, or plant a seed? Twenty. We're nothing. We're a bunch of grabbers, all of us, looking for the best of it. Just once, couldn't we help somebody? Just to help somebody? That's it, you're through, Sister Queenie. That's it, just we're gonna help somebody. We are going to help me. Me, that's who we're gonna help. I'm gonna make any kind of a deal that Darcy wants. Any kind of a deal at all. Unless we've blown the deal already. Hallelujah. I'm going to drink to you. That's my first of five years. Do I infer you're stranding poor Annie on the rocky beach of despair? You know, I've had just about enough of your hot air to judge. You, out. And you, out, out. Both of you, out, out. Come on. That's it, that's it. Out, out. Spools out. Everybody, out. Uncle David, I hope we're not interrupting anything. I... Louise, Aunt Betty, <laughs> darling. Well, well, Uncle David was just telling me the good news. Oh, my heartiest congratulations, Carlos. Thank you. I hope we're not intruding. Not at all, not at all. You're a breath of eternal spring, my boy. We were just taking a walk, and, and Carlos had the most wonderful, sweetest idea. Oh, what is it, Carlos? No, no, this is not the time or the place. Oh, of uh, course it is, Carlos. He thinks the world of you, Uncle David. Louise, uh, what is it, Carlos? Well, sir, I... That is, Luis and I. Yes. We would be most pleased if, when the time comes, you will consent to be godfather to our first child. <coughs> He'd be delighted. What? Uncle David's already an experienced godfather. Oh, Uncle David, I love you so much. Thank you, senor. I am very honored, and my family is very honored. And if it's a boy, we'll name him after you. No. Luisa, we cannot take up any more of their time. Thank you. No, I'm sure you have so much to do arranging the reception on such short notice. Bye-bye. Goodbye. About a hundred people, you said, Judge? Not just people but citizens of style and grace, and this above all, daisies who won't tell. Dudes gang! Now there's a bunch of daisies that wouldn't dare squeal. You put the right clothes on them and they'd pass off as kings. They would? 
Well, look at Annie. The Count fell for her hook, line, and sinker, and you and me, too. And Carlos, he thinks the dude is a young Abe Lincoln. Yeah. And the Count even swallowed Joy Boy, and I can do better than that in a pet shop. If you weren't abroad, I'd kick you right in the stomach. And my old chorus girls, why, they'd make the most glamorous society queens this town's ever seen. Indeed, why not? The world goes round in make-believe. Take Louis the Lug. Put a carnation in his buttonhole and it'll look like Grover Whalen. And the weasel, wouldn't he make a great secretary of war? The weasel is secretary of war? No, he don't rate no more than an alderman. Dude! Why, why, the weasel would make as good a secretary of war as anyone you no, can name. No, no, I think he'd rate an alderman. Don't, that's craziness. You're getting hooked again. Hey, do you know what you almost had me do? You almost had me walking out on poor little old Apple Annie. That's what you did. All right, Queenie, call your broads. Judge, call Boyle's pool room. I know you have that number. Do. I'll call the dude. Do. 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 Round everybody up. Hello, Sophie. Well, it was not in real tight. It was a good thing I was a Boy Scout. Mr. Darcy ain't going to like this. You tell your friend, Mr. Darcy, he's got a deal, but on my terms. He delivers me $100,000 cash. And no more of you popgun monkeys showing up around me, or else I ain't going to like it. Now, hit the sidewalk. Would you kindly connect me with Harry the horse? Honey, forget the house party. I need you now. Hey, Cheesecake, rust out the boys and take them with Turkish bath, will you? What do you think what for? A bath, you jerk. Hey, uh, Joy Boy, get a hold of, uh, what's his name? Rosie, the suit man. That's a good idea. I'll have him measure you all for straight jackets. Hello, Harry. I have a poll room. Hey, Slop, will you check with Cheesecake? Yes. I want you to take a Turkish bath. Yeah, no, he made an appointment. I gave my love a cherry without no stone. I gave my love a chicken without no bone. I gave my love a ring. Carlos a flower and blushed a smile. My love threw me the autumn moon and left a mile. I gave my love a heart of I'm not finished. Well, you'll have to at the wedding feast now. Your father told me that every Romero for a thousand years has had to do this. It's all because some silly ancestor wrote. Oh, I love it, please. You interrupt people at the oddest <laughs> moments. Please. I hope nobody is listening. For her. For whom I would walk through fire. Great cathedrals, heavenly choir, sings, gods, angelic music. Be still, my racing heart. She is floating toward me as a winged melody. I burst with a Spanish pride. A thousand eyes, all moist and dewy, share the lovely vision. Behold. My bride. Mother. Mrs. Manville. I was lonely for you. It is my fault, please. I have a lifetime with Louise, and you only two days. I will see you later, Mother. You do.
do not mind my calling you mother. I'd like that, son. Thank you. Mother. You do love him, don't you? Oh, so much it must show, Mama. Today, when we were walking along Broadway, a little old flower peddler, a deaf and dumb lady, gave me this. She insisted I take it, and she refused to accept a penny for it. Oh, Mama, life is wonderful, isn't it? Yes, baby. Yes. Mama? Yes. You don't think anything can, can happen, do you? Happen? Oh, I'm foolish, I suppose. Maybe it's because I'm wishing so hard. Mama, have you ever wished for something so hard? Oh, nothing's going to happen. Nothing. Yeah? Captain Moore to see you, Inspector. Take him right in. Well, anything on the missing reporters? Nothing, Inspector. Not a thing. Newspapers are crucifying us. You hear Winchell last night? Yeah? Commissioner's on the phone. There he is again. Fourth time today. Hello, Commissioner. No. No, but I've got Captain Moore in my office right now. No, not a thing yet. What do you mean, not a thing yet? I'm McCrary. I'm not going to be made the goat for the whole department. What is it? Mayor's on the phone. Well, didn't you tell him I was out? He didn't believe it. Hold on a minute. Hello. Yeah, Chief. No, I was just talking to Inspector McCrary. There's not a thing yet. Not a thing. I have had a super sufficiency of not a thing. Now, I want some action, and I want it quickly. Every editor in town is in my office this minute. Yes, and Mr. Mayor, you're going to get a front-page editorial in my paper every day till something's done. It is a very embarrassing situation when a reporter is not safe on our streets, Commissioner. If the city administration can't do anything, perhaps the state can. And when the governor gets here tomorrow, we're going to take it up with him. I want you to find those three reporters, Commissioner, or I will be forced to demand your resignation. Hello, McCrary. Now you get this straight. You dig up those three reporters, or I'm going to have to get myself another boy. Captain, I'm giving you 24 hours to find those missing reporters. And if you can't do it, you're going to find yourself on the other end of a broom at the horse barn. And that's no... Well, what is it? I think we've got an angle on the reporter business. Speak up, son. Speak up. Well, a funny thing happened. Last Saturday, I was down meeting one of the boats to check the passenger list. When a couple of characters grabbed me and shoved me into a car. Why didn't you report it sooner? Well, it didn't hurt me. He just drove me around the Bronx and then gave me taxi money. But when I read about those other reporters... And I the think... idea who grabbed him? Uh, not exactly, sir. Mm. But a couple of the men working the piers reported seeing Dave the Dude down there Saturday night meeting some people. Mm. And with his whole mob. Dave the Dude. Mm. Well, it's not much. But he began to look like a police department. Captain, you got to put a tail on the dude. There could be a connection. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just a few more speeches and we'll have it covered. Well, as Jimmy Durante says, I've got a million of them. My dear Tom, it is indeed a pleasure I'm meeting up. I'm charmed to meet you, Tom. I'm charmed to meet you, Tom. I'm charmed to meet you. I hold it, everybody. That's it. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Hold it, quiet. Listen, 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 listen. Will you, one thing at a time, huh? Queenie, take your broads over to the other side of the room. You guys come around here. I want to talk to you. My guy's over here. Broads over there. Let's move. Come on. Come on, move it. Let's go. We ain't got all night. Come on, move it. All right, come here now. You guys, I want you to tell you something. You got to remember something. You're not a bunch of bums, see? You're a bunch of gents. Look, dude, you got to make them stop with the pistols. They're making holes in the lining. I thought I told you to tell them to leave the rods home. Now, how many times do I have to tell Please you something? I told you, no rods. Yeah, no rods. Come on, you guys. If we don't behave ourselves and act like gents, we're going to bollocks the whole schmear up tomorrow night, and then that's, that's it, you know? Now, you all got the speeches yeah. the judge wrote for you, yeah. huh? Yeah. You got them, you know who you are, huh? I don't have to tell you. All right, who are you, Slops? Governor of the state of Utah. State of what? No, no, no. State of Utah. Yeah, Utah, me Utah. Look, will, will you read the speech the way the judge give it to you, please? Oh, don't yak too much. Just, just smile all the time. That'll get you by anybody, even kings. Kings, yeah. But these mugs, you smile at them, you got a hand on the knee. 
Oh, you've had so many hands on your knees, dearie. You wear gloves for stocking. <laughs> oh, you know, that. Dude, if any of your he's make passes at my she's. No right, passes, right. no passes, yeah, no that? passes. No passes. No passes. Yeah. No passes. Yeah. E, what a party pooper. I don't want to hear no more from you, Slops. Oh, hey, dude. What? This ain't a good speech the judge give me. What are you doing, handicapping speeches now? No, but this counts an out of town guy, ain't he? Yeah, so what? So all I tell him he's a lucky bump for meeting up with Apple Annie. Well, what do you want to tell him? Maybe you'll fix him up with a couple of dames. Just read the speech, please, right. like the judge gave you. Will you do that? Oh, oh, that oh, asks me so much. Oh, hey, cheesecake. Oh, tell him to be quiet, will you? To me. Quiet down, you guys. To me. Quiet. Will you please be quiet? Now, what's the matter with you? Why aren't you practicing like I asked you? Well, I've been practicing. Only, only what? Well, I'm as good as Louis the Lug is any day, and if he's an ambassador, I ought to be a king. You're Secretary of the Interior. That's bigger than an ambassador. I ain't as dumb as you think. A secretary's a secretary. All right, all right, Brain. I'll make you the postmaster, all right, huh? That's more like it. I save stamps. <clears throat> yeah. Judge, you got a new postmaster here. Check. All right, come here, Max. Come here. Yeah, what do you want? All right, uh, give the speech to him now, huh? You're the count. Go ahead. I thought I was the governor of Florida, you all. No, will you just please pretend you're the Count for a minute, will you? Oh. All right, go ahead, shoot. Uh, count, Your Honor, uh, it's a rare privy. Privy? What are you talking about? It's a rare privilege, jackass! Does it say that? Does it say that? I didn't think I was supposed to call the Count no jackass. You're giving me a headache, you know that? You guys are giving... Get away from me, will you? Boy, me too! What a bunch of ignoramites! What? Ignoramites. That's yeah. more than one ignoramouse. Yeah, you too, huh? Here. Well, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. I right, stop practicing! I'm charmed to meet you, Count. You sting. Yeah, you jerk. Oh, no, you don't. All we need now is a crying drunk. Will you give me one good reason to stay sober? You're the genius who thought all this up, supposing you straighten out this menagerie. Hey, you guys, listen to Miss Martin here. Okay, quiet down, everybody. Quiet. Quiet! 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 Oh. Now, let's do one thing at a time. Forget the speeches for now, and, and we'll concentrate on the bowing. Judge, will you show them how to bow again? Well, it's quite simple. The movement is at the waist, with a graceful gesture of the hand. Thus. See, what's so difficult about that, huh? Head waiters do it, foreigners do it, can't even speak English. All right, now listen, have a he and a she and pair off and practice the bowing, will you please? Just, I know you brought over here! Oh, Come on, girls. We got a guy to start bowing. Don't forget the hand, adjust it with the hand. Bow, everybody bows, bow! If I'm sober, why do I see things like this? Does the Board of Health know about this epidemic? Ah! What's the matter? Tim, he, he tried to pick my pocket where there ain't no pocket. I don't know. Come on, you guys. You ain't taking this thing serious. Yeah, and I'm gonna, and you gals too, you ain't either. But I'm gonna tell you something. This is serious, all right. It's murder. Yeah, you, you're probably saying to me, well, what's in it for us? Well, I'm gonna tell you what's in it for you. Nothing. I mean, nothing that you can put in your pocket. But I mean, after all, did any of us ever plant a bridge, uh, uh, build a bridge or plant a seed? I mean, for once, yeah, could we just do something nice for somebody? This is for, you know, this is for old Apple Annie. And if something should go wrong tomorrow night, there's just no telling what'll happen to poor old Annie. Maybe she'll put her head in the oven. That would be the perfect solution. Oh. So, come on now. We're going to practice. We're going to get in there, and we're going to make this. I tell you what you do. You make believe it's for your own mother. I ought to do something for my mother. They won't let me see her since they stuck her in solitaire. Huh? Now, come on. Start practicing, everybody. Stop. I say it again and again and again. This will never work. This will never work. This will never work. Happy days. The music must be soft and mellow. Nothing harsh. Nothing raucous, just the gentle drip of rain upon an autumn leaf. 
Yes, sir. I'll lay on the silk. Splendid. Keep it smelty. <laughs> now, the new men? Yes, sir. Trustworthy? Oh, completely. I'm just loving this, sir. Aren't you? Hutch, in here it's Christmas. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As Pascal said, the heart hath reasons that reason itself knows nothing about. A handkerchief, a, a, a handkerchief. Yeah, no. Oh, yes, of course. Lola, do I look all right? The head waiter at the Ritz would give you the best table. Oh, God bless you. See for yourself, Mrs. E. Worthington Manville. You'd make Cinderella look barefoot. I don't know who that is in there. I hope the whole thing isn't a dream. Give me my basket. Oh. Apples. Apples. Beautiful dreams coming true, Anne. Oh, God love you. Everybody's so wonderful, and, and I'm so scared. Come in. Shades of Aphrodite, goddess of beauty. Oh, that man just fills the room. Never in all my questionable career have I feasted my eyes upon such divine loveliness. Cut it out, Judge. What time's the dude coming? Eight o'clock, my fluttering dove, and bringing the best trained social lions you ever saw. But can they fool the count? Fret yet, my pet, you'll behold a miracle. Orchids bloom where weeds once grew. But what if they make mistakes? The dude will kill them. Ah, oh, the poor dears. Now, pull yourself together, dudes. Remember, you're the proud mother of a lovely daughter whose engagement is about to be announced. And don't think of mistakes. If any mug pulls a boner, I'll flood the room with a torrent of oratory. Oh, you're a wonderful judge. I know, I know. Now, here's the plan for the receiving line. You stand next to me. Then Louise. Yeah. Then the Count. Yeah. And, and where am I? Right here. Oh. Dudeness Marber at Queenie Martin's. Queenie Martin's? What are they doing there? I don't know. It sure looks big. They got a line of cars out here a block long. Stay right on his tail. Don't let him get away from you now. Right. Let's close off the block. Confidentially, there are times when I'm a bit ashamed of my fellow Americans, the way they fawn over celebrities, particularly you titled nobility. Uh, I think that is charming. <laughs> They're like children. You'll notice it tonight in your presence. They'll probably stammer and appear to be tongue-tied and awkward. I beg of you to make allowances for them. Of course, but of course. Different countries, different customs. Which reminds me, George, there is a custom in my country, which is not a custom in your country. I have been hoping that you would speak about it. Indeed, sir. What's on your mind? The dowry, my dear judge. As yet, nothing has been said about the dowry. The dowry, huh? See? I am aware, of course, that in America, it is not important. But in my country, it is the first arrangement. In your country, yes. In my country, uh, dowry, huh? Well, I don't know what to say, Count. You kind of crept up on me on that one. I mean, uh, this is so totally unexpected, but uh, don't you think it's uh, a bit vulgar to speak of money? Well, let us be vulgar then for a moment. I am willing to make a settlement equal to 50,000 of your dollars. You are? Of my dollars? See, si. I've been hoping that you would be willing to make a similar settlement. Oh, willing, yes, yes, of course, willing. Ah, old Napoleon. Join me in a nippy with Nappy. Oh, delighted, George. I see you keep your billiard table in excellent condition. Do you play? Do I play? Senor in Barcelona. I am the champion. Well, now, isn't that just... you don't say? See, si. Perhaps a uh, little game before the uh, guests arrive. I can think of nothing that would give me greater pleasure. Oh. 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 
Oh, about that dowry, Count. Hey, yes, George. It just occurred to me that inasmuch as the young folks are going back to Spain to live with you, that uh, I should take care of the whole amount. Oh, no, no, no. I could not let you bear the entire burden. But it's no burden, my dear Alfonso. So, the matter's settled. Uh, please, my dear host, you are so gracious. You make me feel ashamed. I shall take care of the full amount. <laughs> oh, this seems silly. We could debate the point for hours. In America, we have methods to settle such differences. We toss coins or pull straws. <laughs> What's so amusing, Alfonso? I could take advantage of you, George. Carl. Indeed, right. sir. <laughs> oh, uh, you wouldn't suggest a billiards contest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough, folks. You're gonna start sweating. Yeah, no sweat. Nobody sweats. Dude, it's gonna work, so help me. Okay, baby, get your coat, huh? Right. Hey, Dave. Right. Dave, come here. We're in, kid. We're in. It's Darcy. Says you could write your own ticket, yes or no. On my terms, Darcy. All right, I tell you what you do. You bring little Swiss to Pier 84 at midnight, huh? And bring the cash. Hey, what do you think of my apple now, huh? I love it, I love it, I love it. Oh, ready, dude. All right, now listen, folks. Queenie and I are leaving now. The rest of you follow in groups of four every few minutes, huh? And Junior, you take over here. Right. Good night. Good night. Good luck, dude. Bye. Bye. Queenie, the Darcy deal's all set. On my terms. I'm gonna need you now more than ever. Oh, don't leave me. Okay, Dave. Anything you say. That's him. Mr. Dude, cops all around the place. Thank you, mister. Hey, boss, what's the matter? Hey, you know, there's cops out there. Millions of them. Cops? What are we going to do now? Yeah. We can't go with Annie's with them out there. They'll follow us. Yeah. Queenie, get the judge on the phone. We've got to stall him. Come here. What do you think they're doing out there? We just talked to Darcy, didn't we? I don't know. I don't figure it. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, let me think. I don't like it. What amazing luck. I've been very fortunate, haven't I? 24 24. You realize. You make this shot, you win. Really? Well, this shot seems practically impossible. I have seen it made. It's a seven-cushion shot with high, delicate, right-hand English. Oh, that would take an expert. I beg pardon, sir. Mrs. Manville's brother-in-law on the telephone. Brother sir. David? Yes, sir. He says it's very urgent. I shall be there directly. Judge, export. Oh, sir, I beat him regularly. Thank you, sir. Hello, Brother David. Congratulate me. I just saved you $50,000. Will you knock off the lousy jokes? We're in a jam here at Queenie Martin's. The place is surrounded by blue coats. Cops? Oh, I don't care for that at all, my dear dude. Would you suggest that I fold my tent and silently scram into the night? Look, if you know what's good for you, you'll stay right where you are. Now, you just stall him. I'll figure something out. Figure past, dude. I'm notoriously poor at bag holding. And I... What is it, Henry? Nothing. Nothing at all, my dear. Happened. I heard you. You said something about cops. They're not coming no, here, are no, they? No, of course not. Now, but... don't lie to I... me, Henry. Tell me the truth. No, don't get yourself all worked something up. Something is going to happen. I have got to know. I'd rather tell them the truth myself. Mama! If they... Mama! Look what the Count gave me to wear tonight. It's an heirloom that used to belong to Queen Isabella. Uh, Beautiful, dear. It's, it's going to be mine after the wedding. Carlos hasn't seen it on me. She 
She's a lovely girl, isn't she, Judge? Don't you think she's lovely? Angelic, my dear. What am I going to do? Suppose the Count calls off the wedding. She, she hates me. Don't, don't, don't be silly, Annie. You want to know who her father is? What am I going to tell you? you? See, I was never married. You won't have to tell her anything. Now get a grip on yourself. You don't come up with something. He always does. <laughs> Before this evening is over, I expect complete apology from you. That is why I asked you here. My dear Count, nothing would give me greater satisfaction than to be proven an imbecile. What time do the guests arrive? Oh, uh, well, no one arrives first, sir. They uh, all come in last. Boss. Will you knock it off? You know, those bulls out there, they ain't got nothing on me or else they'd break that door down. Will you tell me, please, how am I going to get all these people to Annie's without them cops tailing us? Well, you've got one ace in the hole. Yeah, what's that? Give them what they want. Well, why? Why do they want? Give them the truth. The truth to the cops? What's the matter? You out of your skull? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got what they want. Yeah. I'm going to go down, I'm going to see the commissioner, I'm going to make a deal. The commissioner? Right. Take over, Junior. Joy boy. Come on. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like the whole thing. I don't like it. All right, everybody up on your feet. I don't like the way you bowed. We're going to do the bowing thing. Yeah. Let's go. Look, all I ask you, Commissioner, is you just lay off me for tonight. That's huh? all? Yeah. Don't you want me to give you the keys to the city, too? <laughs> What's your whole mob doing at a padlock joint like Queenie Martin? Nothing, Martin's? nothing at all. I mean, that would interest you. But, but, you see, I just can't tell anybody about it, that's all. <clears throat> but if you'll just give me a base on balls for tonight, I'll save your badge for you. What do you mean, you'll save my badge? I read the papers. You want to find those reporters, don't you? You got those reporters? I got friends. You see, all I got to do is just spread the word around those friends. And those newsboys, they'll show up tomorrow just as good as new. See? But all I ask you is, please, Commissioner, just lay off me for tonight. I don't make deals with bums like you. You'll have a police escort until they show up. Get him out of here. Right. Wait a minute. Okay, Mac, I'm going to tell you something. I got those reporters, and they ain't showing up until I'm good and ready. Now we're going to do business. Sure, dude, sure. We can do business. Coberly, Briscoe, frisk these guys and book them. Yeah, right. what? <laughs> what? Yes, sir. You can always do business with the police department. Well, this ain't going to get you no place. Give me the mayor. You know, I don't think you can get him, Commissioner. He's throwing that big party for the governor. Yeah. He finds out what this is about. I'll Look, get him. Don't be a sap. What do you want to drag the mayor in I for? wouldn't be surprised if he'll make a deal with you, too. He'll probably settle for about 50 years. Look, I promise you there's nothing crooked going on here. As a matter of fact, when you hear the story, you're going to laugh your head I'm off. I'm laughing already, dude. I've been waiting 10 years to laugh at you. <laughs> Oh, you... oh, hello, Chief. Yeah. Hold it just before you talk to him. Joy boy, I told Queenie I'd tell the truth. Huh? Okay, I'm going to give you the truth. You're going to think I'm nuts, but it's the truth. You see, it's like, uh, well, it's... It's like a uh, mother ghost story. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's like one of those stories you sort of tell the kids when you put them down to bed at night. Would you all the while, Chief? Dave the dude, boot like a racketeer and gambler, wants to tell me a Betty Bye story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget it. Boy, I'm going to hang before I'm going to let any think of a cop give me the horse laugh. And as for you, Mr. Mayor, you tell your Mr. Mayor in there that he ain't ever going to see those reporters again. Shiv! Dave the dude is in my office. I've got to use a phone. Get you. Yeah, Dave, will you get one of these Dave the dude is in my office. He admits he's got those reporters. Good work, Commissioner. Dave the dude admits having the reporters. 
Dave, the one? Fancy pants ex-bootlegger. Well, excellent. Have they arrested him? Of course they've arrested him, Governor. But what do you suppose will happen now? A bail bond and he's out laughing. That's ridiculous. Now, that's the way things go down here, Governor. I'll have all the colossal nerve. Who does he think he is? He can't make any deals with the police department. There's an example, Governor. You see, he makes deals. The dude says if we don't let him alone tonight, we may never see those reporters again. What? Why, this is outrageous. Mr. Mayor, the... Don't get excited, Governor. It's quite the customary procedure. Bring the dude up here. That's exactly what I said. Bring him without delay. Don't worry about my guess. This is more important. Well, gentlemen, you're so quick to criticize my administration. Let's see what you can do with him. I'd send a criminal like that away for life. Here's your chance, Governor. All right, Slops, up on your blisters. You ain't bowing right. Lay off, Junior. I'll be bound so much you're a callous on my belly button. Come on, bow. Sit down, Junior. Save your strength. Hello? Dude? You're where? With the police? You gonna go over and pick up the reporters? Oh, poor Annie. All right, I'll, I'll go right over. I feel sorry for the whole stinking world. What's it gonna be? It's all off. Send the suits back. I'm sorry, kids. You can go home. Thanks oh, for everything. Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> you learned how to bow, didn't you? Go ahead. I wish I could cry. Come on, Junior. There's nobody at Queenie Martin's. I, I, no, 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 Annie. Don't do anything foolish. Mama? Mama, isn't anybody coming? Mama, what's wrong? Oh, Louise, baby. If you should... Anything should happen. Mama. You wouldn't hate your mother. Don't say things like that. Is the count in the living room? What is it, Mama? La Commedia Epanita. Send the waiters and the musicians home. Call a couple of doctors. Where's poor Annie? Annie, I'm so sorry. Count Romero, I'd like to talk to you for a minute, please. I'm sure you must know there's nothing in the world I want more than for my daughter to marry your son. She loves him, loves him very much. And I know he loves her too. Ever since Louise was born, I've lived for one thing. Future. And when she, she wrote me that she found someone she loved, I, I was the happiest mother in the world. Count Romero, I know you came to America to find out all about us, about Louise's family. No, no, senor. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't blame you. you you have the right, and it would be terrible after they were married to, 
to find out that that Louise's mother was someone you would be ashamed of, that, that even Louise would be ashamed of. That's silly, Mama. Uh, Mrs. Margaret. Let me go on. I wanted this talk so you would find out all about me. First of all, Count Romero, I must tell you that I am. of New York. It's your idea. Start beaming. Oh, my dear Mrs. Mandel, it's so good to see you again. The last time I had this pleasure, I believe, was at your lovely party at Briarcliff. I will never forget it. It was a brilliant affair. And this, of course, is Louise, the image of her late father. Well, young lady, are you going to give us the good news so tonight? Nice to see yes. you, dear. May I present you look just lovely. Well have you seen Lord Bergen? How do you do? This is a pleasure. Welcome to our city, sir. In person. You look so much younger than in the newsreels. Well, indeed. Well, thank you very much. This is my son, Carlos. His honor, the mayor. You are the lucky young man. Well, congratulations. Thank you. My son, Carlos. Count Romero. His Excellency. The governor of New York State. <laughs> My dear Mrs. Manville, what a pleasure to see you again so soon and so radiant. And this is the fabulous Louise. You know, I've always admired you, so her beauty doesn't surprise me. Do you know my wife? Yeah. Mrs. Mandel? We're so happy to be here. Louise? We wouldn't have missed this for the world. Count, allow me to welcome you to New York. Oh, I'm crying. Dude, I'm crying. Joy, boy, look, I'm crying. All right, all right. All right, I got my own troubles. Huh? Oh, I can't. Police escort. That is more than we get in Barcelona. Yeah, nothing, eh? my dear Carlos, nothing at all. I've had many a police escort. How about that? The mayor, the governor, the cops. I thought they were all crooks. <laughs> Why did they do it? They gotta have an angle. Delightful experience. <laughs> Made me feel 10 years younger. Are you still going to investigate the mayor's administration, Governor? I don't think so. I, I think we'll postpone it. I must remember to call the commissioner tomorrow. I've made his life miserable the last few days. <laughs> <laughs> Announced the engagement of their daughter Louise to Carlos Romero in Barcelona, Spain, at a gala reception last night, and so on and so forth. Take it from there and include a complete list of the guests. And that's your story. That's all of it. But what about our being snatched? What was that all about? Who said you were snatched? You were out on a drunk, understand? Drunk? Drunk. 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 Well, I'm going to the boat to see her off. Sing a party while day. Happy days must really be back if you bums are taking cabs now. Oh, oh pipe down. We're well, with the governor. Dry up, we're yeah, godfathers. We're yeah, we're yeah, we're Fanny well, Fanny well, my dear Louise. We're going to the boat to see her off. Sing a party while we all day. Parked right behind you. He's waiting. He's got a hundred G's in small bills. Hey, boys, you, you got business. Can I have the night off? Because I got to go see Ma. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Listen, Dave, my wife, uh, I ain't seen her in a week, and you know she's this way again, so uh, what do you say you and me will split a cab? Come on. Elizabeth? Yeah? Huh? Uh, <clears throat> what was the uh, name of that uh, town in Maryland? Oh! <laughs> now, come on, now, quit balling now. <laughs> Baby, my darling. God bless you. I don't know. <laughs> Courage, my pet. Don't pay now. Oh, Courage. <laughs> is loaded. Start hustling. Because I'm going to raise you one buck a month to work on the oh, no, 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 no